let's do a fun little video anyway. It is time to hang out with the geniuses at the Genius Bar. We're at the Genius Bar. Hey guys, let's try to fix this iPhone. We've got an iPhone here from Georgia and let's start with a note. Trust me, I'm a genius. I'm a genius today. I'm a genius. Let's see. Um, note says, uh, referral source, phone repair guy. Awesome. My phone cut off on me one day and it will not turn back on. I took it to the Apple store and they said that the phone quote will, and he actually put quotes, will never turn back on again. I was hoping y'all could help recovery all of my data on this phone. I was hoping y'all could help recovery all of my data on this phone. So let's see if we can help out James from Georgia because the Apple store said that this phone will never turn back on again. Let's see if they are right. Okay, so this is the deal. This is this, this is a dead iPhone. This is an iPhone 6S. And we are going to see if, what the real challenge is, is to see if we can get this phone to turn back on in a, a fun way using some freeze spray and some fun stuff before Christy can make that iPad 5 uh, charge again. Racing? Yeah, we're going to race. Do you want to come, uh, come up here and be a, 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 my genius bar? No. No? Uh, you know what? We were talking about bucket lists the other day. And uh, you know what? One thing is on my bucket list. What's it that? is to spend some time in my life not having any pets whatsoever. Wouldn't that be cool? What does that have to do with me? Uh, it has to do with bucket list stuff. Uh, so let's turn this back on. Um, I was just thinking about, uh, you know, going home since it is, it is 1041. And I was thinking that when I get home, I will want to go to bed. So this phone's totally dead. We are going to hit up the DC power supply and see what it says. So step one visual exam. I looked at this board. I don't see anything up with it. I don't think I took it out. I just took out the screws. Uh, when I get back home, I will want to go to bed and unless something has happened that was a miracle today called the kids did some laundry when i get back home i will be reminded of what it was like when i woke up this morning which was that underdog i woke up to the exciting sound and smell of underdog shitting on my pillow so that was not fun. Let's take a look at the good old DC power supply, shall we? Let's see, how do we get microscope? Here's our microscope cam. Hold on, geniuses. Oh, not microscope cam. Let's do our hand camera. There we go, hand camera, the hand camera. All right, hand camera. Today, we're gonna look at this DC power supply. Set up with a battery voltage of four volts, and right now it's at zero amps and I'm going to press in the battery connector and whiz bang boom three amps that's a lot that's a big ass short shorts are the are our favorite problem to solve and since we like them so much because they're fun we like to do things like make videos when we get fun shorts like this and that leads to newbie problem number one which is trying to make every problem be the problem that you want to solve and coming up with tools like 900 dollars thermal imagers to see what gets hot uh, you'll always find something that'll get hot um, if you're looking for heat, but that doesn't mean that every problem is a short. So don't be, don't be trolled by the fact that people that do YouTube like me like to do fun little examples where you get to look for a short, especially when the Apple store says, this phone's never going to turn back on, bro. So we want to do the short circuit ones on YouTube. 
and the brain burners that we sit here and beat our heads on all day and never solve, you guys don't really get to see. So I think it kind of somehow sometimes creates the wrong impression that board repair is easy and that is not true. All right, so let's see. Let's see if we can look at this board and maybe this board will get me to stop thinking about the, uh, the likelihood that when I get home there is going to be what my kids call puddle poop. That's the worst kind of underdog diarrhea. Underdog had to start, I had to start feeding him canned food because he started to run away. Did you know that? Are you, More have, than just when uh, Mark's delinquent dog was being a bad influence? Yeah, he, when he was hanging out with the wrong crowd. Yeah, more than that. He, uh, he ran away like two or three times, which is unheard of. The underdog does not run away. And then I, then I kind of realized, like, wait, that's the same dog food that's been in your bowl since Monday. So, like, something's up with his teeth, and he can't, he can't eat dog food. So that is not cool. All right, I don't see any physical exam findings that jump out at me. So let's use our ye old multimeter and let's uh, let's see if we can show you guys whether or not this thing has a short circuit. Now, I like to go around and memorize for every main board that we work on, where's a good favorite VCC main spot? Because VCC main, the main power rail, is connected in essence to the battery through the, uh, the MOSFET that connects battery to main. So when you have a big ass short like this, before asking the phone to do anything, that generally points you towards either the battery or the main power rail. So we're going to check out the main power rail and we're gonna see whether or not we have a short in diode mode. So we've gotta put red probe on ground and then we've gotta find your favorite spot on VCC main, which you know can be different for every phone. So here's my favorite spot. And we do have a full short on VCC main with a 000, zero, zero diode mode reading. Now I'll show you what's my favorite spot. And here it is. It's, I always like to find a spot. My favorite spot is always gonna be on the top side of the board because sometimes you don't even have to take the board out in order to figure out whether or not you have a short circuit. Now on the iPhone 6S, here's a little tip for folks that are watching a late night video. Um, Underdog is a carnivore. Underdog is like a disgustivore. He pretty much eats anything that other other living entities would find absolutely disgusting. He he loves it. Baby diapers would be a big hit. Uh, snacks out of the litter box from the cats. All right, here's the thing. See on the iPhone 6s how you've got all of this lovely waterproofing. You've got the foam gaskets around the connectors and you've got all of this black bathtub caulk everywhere so that water can't get in. And there's a couple spots where water always seems to go. So let's imagine that you dropped, you got a drop of water over here on your battery and you dropped your phone in rice like any good American. And that drop of water then rolled over here, rolled around, rolled around. It's going to drop down in these spots where there's a void from the silicone overcoat. And one of those spots is right here. So it drops down right there, boom. And that spot there is uh, VCC main. There's a little filter there that connects it to the other hot spot, which is uh, over here, boom, right in that little tucked into that spot. You'll get a drop of water there a lot as well on this little camera LDO extension. So those are hot spots. In fact, I've seen, it came to my attention, there's been more than one phone where it didn't have anything wrong except for one drop of water right there, which kills the, the, whole, the whole phone. He probably got banned for wicking pads. Who got banned? All right. Uh, Apple stores just know to say it will not light anymore. Hmm. Don't be surprised with a puddle poop when feeding him grain-based food. You better not be telling me that the pedigree uh, dog food is is somehow corn-fed corn cow. That better not be true. Lewis deleted his Dota channel. What? 
Okay, so um, I haven't talked to Lewis for a while. I've been trying to be a mom this summer. All right, so now we have a, um, ah, that's the wrong one. Now we have, let's go back to the Genius Bar. Let's, let's get a consult. So guys, it uh, looks like there's a full short on VCC main. Um, I know you guys said earlier that this one would never turn back on again, but don't you think that we should, you know, this guy wants his pictures back. Don't you think that we should just try to find the short? I mean, you know, what do you think? Do, I mean, do, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Just this once. Just this once. Let's let's go outside policy and let's actually clear this VCC main short. I'm tired of people putting down the geniuses. Where's the geniuses? We should be able to do this. All right, we're going to do it. We're going to do it, guys. We're going to go after it. We're going to see if we can find the reason why there's a VCC main short. Now, there's absolutely no physical uh, signs. There's no water on this phone. So we don't really have a, a good... Um, a good lead so what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, try and inject some voltage into the short circuit and see if we can see a spot that gets hot now well, I'm gonna go ahead and take up the uh, shields and we'll find a spot to put a wire on here and see if we can if we can make these geniuses great again we're gonna make these geniuses great again. So last night was the uh, the resident roast. Jeff did a really good job. So he's done with that. He's he's finished with that for the for the year. And he got to tell some cool stories from the from the families of the graduates. <coughs> One that was my favorite was uh, this little kid who who grew up to become one of the, these neurology residents when he was a little kid, his, his dad's doctor's office was in his house. And his dad, as he often did, lined up his patient's urine samples on the counter out by his office. And so the little kid comes by and sees all these lined up Dixie cups, and does what any kid will do. Dad, I'm thirsty. And takes takes old lady Johnson's urine sample and sucks her down. And I think that would be a really tough call to make as a physician, to have to call old lady Johnson back in and explain to her uh, why it is that you need to get another urine sample from her. That would be embarrassing. All right, here's, our, here's a good spot. So let's pick uh, right here where these two caps are together. And we are going to solder a wire on here. Um, and we're going to pick a wire that <coughs> is as thick as the thick as one we can find around here, which is this one. Let's see. You're in sample in a Dixie cup. Yeah. Well, this, this is from the, the past, like the 90s. Yes. Back when doctors worked out of their house all right here we go it was funnier when Jeff told it though I think because he 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 added in for the benefit of the largely medical uh, audience that old lady Johnson probably had diabetes that kid had no idea that it wasn't just Kool-Aid but um bum which is pretty funny if your audience is aware that diabetes actually is a term that I believe means something like siphon or sieve because you are thirsty all the time <coughs> because you got so much damn sugar in your blood and therefore your urine would be sweet. All right, here we go. Let's look back at the microscope. Hey guys, can I borrow your microscope? You don't mind. You, can I use it for a few seconds? I'm just going to finish up this job. Then I'll give it back to you because I know that you guys need to look under the microscope a lot to get your geniusy jobs done. Alrighty. Lewis said he would delete his channel 
If Apple admitted fault and did free replacement by WWDC, they did admit fault after and he did delete the channel. Huh. They admitted fault on what? The keyboard thing? The, the, that is pretty funny. So as far as I know, Lewis hasn't been streaming to his main channel. I like Lewis's streams. They make the day, the work day, go by so much faster. All right. Dota channel is gone. Ow! I burned my finger! I burned my finger, Christy. Where's the workman's comp? Need to fill out a... I think that's Sunday. Is it? Or is it? Is it? I'm pretty sure it's you. Me? Yeah. That's not. That's not in your wheelhouse. I'm part of the HR department. Yeah, exactly. HR workman's comp isn't that like HR? You need a nice pad. Um. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? What are you doing? Is this why you like to work at night? What the hell is this? Re re refined that was from the, I fixed gin. It, um, Clearly, I'm not hitting it very hard because that's from. Wait, when we. we you, this is from the iFixit conference, which was in September. Yeah. Are you, do you drink gin, gin straight up? Wait, I gin's know. made from grapes? Is it true? Not that's, usually. Oh, okay. I was going to say. I thought it was made from, like, the. Like, the, what it smells oh, like is the, the like, bushes, like, yew bushes, the, like, boxwoods and stuff like that. I think it, I think gin is from juniper, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, juniper, that's exactly what it is. Like, bushes, bushes, like, you know, mm -hmm. out by the juniper bush. So I would be surprised if it was made from grapes. All right, so let's see. I'm just uh, going to take a quick gander here to make sure that I have the line on the correct side of these caps, which I believe I do. All right, now let's make sure we have tinned the other end of our wire, which we have. So now we should be able to turn on the hand camera and hook this sucker up. All right, so we'll move, move this guy back over. Alrighty, Phoenix Unconference was okay. Yes, tell us about the Phoenix Unconference. That sounded, honestly, that sounded fun, except for when I went to the iFixit un Unconference, which was totally awesome, totally going to go back. Um, I got stranded in Phoenix, and Phoenix is hotter than hell. It was hot. It was hot in Phoenix, like just crazy hot. Uh, let's see if we can turn... Turn this down a little bit here. And so I don't know. I I uh I wasn't keen to go to go back to Phoenix just because it was too hot. But I hope you guys all had a good time and happy birthday uh to Justin, who I think he wasn't this whole thing because it was his birthday. Alright, so let's see what happens. We're gonna check here to see do we have a short circuit when we touch ground? And we do, so that means something should get hot. Let's see, what is it that's going to get hot? Let's see, so let's uh, check out under the microscope and let's make it be anti-Phoenix, the opposite of Phoenix. <coughs> With all due respect, fuck you, Dana. Let's delete Dana off of this thing. Who can ban... Dana, let's take a minute and, and, Why are we and Dana? ban a douchebag. Uh, somebody who's, who says, shut the fuck up, who, who wants to see a, a repair that is easily found thousands of times. Let's see, how do we do that? Uh, let's see. Uh, There we go. No more Dana. All right. Now let's see what gets what gets hot here. Well, our wire gets hot really quickly. 
I think the very last time I was hunting a main short on a 6S, I put the wire on the caps. Oh, that looks like maybe a spot. Let's check it out over here again. It's always quite unlucky to, act, to, to put the wire on the spot that is getting hot. Did we burn it out? Nope, it's still there. Did you guys see it? I missed it. My eyes keep looking to see if the if my short is still active. Where are you? Where are you at, bro? Where are you at, bro? Well, I think I am going to titrate a little bit. Let's see if we can figure this out. Let's see. Let's drop this down. To be a little bit less. And let's see. All right, so I'm dropping it down so that we're going to limit this to two amps. Because I want the actual uh, hot spot on the in the board to declare itself. Okay. It would be really cool to kind of get these cameras set up so that we could... We could see better switching between scenes. So sometimes I think that short detection is a combination of um, you know physical findings, which there really aren't any, and then. Uh, heat and then the big one that is more important than anything else which is experience and a hunch or history so anything that you could think of where could it, there be a short that makes sense um, so or where have you seen one before in the same kind of scenario so kind of asking you know phone a friend and for these for ones like this on iPhone 6s iPhone 6s tends to get a lot of main shorts and often it is a bad cap. Sometimes it is a, um, a bad cap around speaker amp. So I'm kind of looking around there. I've seen it be one of these boost speaker amp boosts before. Let's turn this down a little bit, a little bit more. And I've seen it also be within the audio, the big large audio I see. I've seen it be related to the arc driver. So around here, one of these guys, I've seen that before. I've definitely seen it before be kind of where the wire is, those guys. I've seen it be this cap before. Tigris is another kind of, you know, good strong possibility. So I've slowed this down so that it's, um, going to produce less wattage, which is the combination of current and voltage. So that I can at least tell kind of what side we're on. So it looks like it's down here on this bottom side. And 
it, we haven't really checked on the other side in here because I have also seen it be this dude here under there. And there's a lot of UCC main caps. I've seen it be these guys here on the end. So I think at this point, we're gonna have to say, all right, this looks like our short is not on the top side of the board. It's gonna be down here on the bottom and our kind of usual suspects. Since we don't see any single cap really clearly raising his hand on this bottom side of the board, we need to look under here and under there. So we're gonna try to do that, which is a little bit tough because this board is pretty cold right now. So here we go, microscope can. All right, jump MOSFET and try battery side. Mm, what? I don't like to take the MOSFET off. If you take the MOSFET off, you gotta put the MOSFET back on. So I try to never take it off unless I am troubleshooting some kind of charging problem. Alrighty, let's... See if we can get this hot enough to get this up. Alrighty. Well, you can't really see anything but but the big old handle here. I think after three years, three long solid years, that my DC power or my uh, my JBC old trusty, old faithful, the producer, is finally starting to be kind of noticeably cool, I guess, even here at max air and max temperature for shield removal. This is a particularly tough shield and it's pretty easy to get a slide. I'm just trying to figure out the sticking point. There we go. Well, let's correct our slide, which we undoubtedly have. Yep. All right. So we're gonna pick off, pick off our boo boo. And let's see if we can figure out where the heck this short is. Well, let's see, what is wrong with this phone? This phone is never going to turn on again. It has been diagnosed with never gonna turn on again disease, according to the geniuses. According to the geniuses at the Apple store. Ah, these guys, they told me it's never gonna turn on again. So we have convinced them that it makes sense to try and solve a straight up VCC main short that it appears to have. So we are going to have fun with free spray and see if we can figure it out. So I'm just correcting a little shield damage. So whenever you take shields off, Oh, there it is. Whenever you take shields off, put your eyeballs on it, especially, you know, this one here. This is a tough one where it's cold from freeze spray. You got to get it super hot. The machine, my uh, hot air, I know is kind of not, it's about, you know, maybe even 10 degrees, which is a lot cooler than what I'm used to. I need to replace the heating element on the old JBC after daily use for three years. Um, so just kind of knowing that equipment, it's going to be tough. So when you get a, when you take a shield off, look around and make sure that you don't have any problems that you need to kind of correct before.
doing that. Now, as we look under the shield, we can see nur, 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 one of these things is not like the others. All right, so there we go. So that that's not much of a of a question that that's certainly going to be our dude. But just for the for the sake of um, of I don't know something being oddly satisfying, let's go ahead and freeze this sucker back down and see if that is the spot that actually gets hot. Remember, there's no rule that says that you know the the bad. The bad dude on the line has to be the thing that heats up first. Sometimes it is. Usually it is. Um, but not always. So let's just see. Let's just see since we're going to guess that this guy, just to be clear, this ugly looking cap, which we totally would have seen if we had started out by, uh, by looking, um, is the first thing to get hot. Now, how did we get here? This is the bottom half of the phone, and we have kind of eliminated the top half of the phone by uh, looking for a heat source. So let's freeze that sucker down and see if he is the hot spot or no. Right, let's see. Let's see. Alrighty. Okay, everything looks crispy cold so let's hook back up hey geniuses i think i found the cap what do you think guys oh let's find out uh let's go back to the hand cam and we are going to connect back our dc power supply which is now down i've lowered it down to 2.2 volts and limited it to about one amp and when i touch ground we still have a short. Okay, so we're gonna take a look for it. You always want to make sure, especially because free spray can, you know, you, if you're gonna use it, you want to get a result from it. Unlike what I just did, which was freeze it, or freeze it down, and then start chatting. All right, let's connect. All right, so now I'm. I want to check to make sure the DC power supply says that I actually have a short, meaning current consumption and I do I have um, I have my one amp there we go and we saw that dude get hot so I think it was a little unclear because we didn't quite get every angle so I I have taken off you know I'm holding this wire in my hand so that I am only triggering the short when I'm trying to look for heat and otherwise not. So I'm holding that ground connection just kind of in my hand. All right, so let's look around and see. All right, let's touch ground. So we're touching ground and we're gonna see what gets hot here in this view. Checking the DC power supply and yes, I have a short going, I see my uh, current consumption is one amp and we're going to see what gets hot that's not the resistance of the wire there we go see how he just declared himself ding ding winner winner chicken dinner so that guy did get melted before anybody else around so that means that he's raising his hand as expected so that guy is the hot spot so now let's get him out of there and see if that solves our short circuit problem so let's test now this one a lot of times with experience um you can kind of know which caps are amenable to this 5 p.m 559 method i saw a second cap heat up well Here's a quiz question for you. While it is possible that there are two individual, two individual dudes at the same time decided they felt like being wires, which is more likely that two unusual events happened at the same time on the same board or that this is the bad guy by himself. Now you can tell just, just kind of probing around and from experience that I will not be able to take him up without taking his pad he is he is adhered to the pad and the pad is not going to separate from him now because this is data recovery 
I don't really care about that. What I do care about is not taking risks on the board and I don't need that cap to be there in order to, to get data from the board. So I'm just gonna knock him off anyway, knowing that he's gonna take the pads off. If I wanted to try to fix this to be a phone again, then I would use a different method. So here he goes and he took his that pad as expected. So over time you can just kind of tell that for some reason the baseband caps, they don't like to release from their pads, but all other caps that are damaged like this do. And it's always fun to interrogate him and ask him, bro, are you a wire? Are you in fact a wire? He says, hell I am. Hells yeah. Then GTFO my blue mat. All right, so let's see. Yeah, he was cracked cap. Okay, so let's, and it, you know, we can kind of wonder, how did that happen? A lot of times if you're trying to, to ask, and I'd like for the, I'm gonna call on the community. I noticed when I read the motherboard article that was talking about the iPhone 7 uh, boot looping stuff, that is audio IC boot loops that you know my opinion is that audio ic boot loops comes from flexion damage which we've talked about a lot on my channel and then i noticed in the article that it said that there's some other folks out there that think that audio ic faults are caused from drop fair you know there's there, nobody here is is really done a whole lot of failure analysis what we what we think changes just like any scientist so who knows what the real answer is but my experience kind of points towards flexion-based defect. Um, and the reason is because I don't see that drop is necessarily uh, required in order to get uh, these, these iPhone 7 audio faults. So maybe it is, and I'm uh, just the ones that I've seen have been dropped in a way that didn't crack the screen. So I'd like for you guys to chime in and report. Have you seen iPhone 7 audio boot looping that was audio IC and solved by audio IC in the absence of drop? So somebody that just comes in complaining about ear speaker stuff, they're, they're complaining, but their phone hasn't been dropped. It doesn't have a cracked screen and they, they have just kind of uh, never been cracked screen. Does anybody have any cases where audio IC boot looping solved by replacing audio IC and adding the C12 jumper. Does anybody have any cases of that that they can tell us about that did not have drop, that seriously didn't have drop? Um, because I really want to clear that up as a community so that we understand our mechanisms. So when we ask, like, how did this happen? I look around to see, do I see any cracked housings on, like, these coils? Coils tend to get just a crack from from drop. Not always, but often they do, just to see whether or not this uh, was electrical damage, which is probably what I would expect, or drop, or or what? You know, the note just said, my phone cut off on me one day and will not turn back on. All right, so now let's ch check back and uh, back up at our at our spot on the top of the board and ask, is our VCC mean short gone or not? So I'll show you what that looks like to take the measurement here under the microscope. One side is ground. I think one side is ground, maybe not. Give me my measurement, yo. No, it says, ah, it says that, hey, this is a good experiment. I'm glad we tested that cap. This says, this is, this is uh, another problem. So who saw that second cap? Where was it? Help me out. Where's the second cap? That's unusual. It's definitely unusual, but possible. All right, let's see. Yeah, according to our calculations here, unless we've uh, messed something up. Yeah, that's what I was worried about, that our wire is touching something. Nope, that's not it. All right, let's check back over here. Give me my reading. It's 
It's not giving me any reason. Pretty sure that that's my VCC main filter that's connecting this dude. This should be a main cap. Let's see. And then let's test up here. This is that LDO uh, branch of VCC main up here by this camera dude. Interesting. All right. Well, now I gotta show. I gotta dig up the schematic. All right. So conclusion: we do not have a short on VCC main anymore because our VCC main diode reading is now 0.334. So let's show that so that we can be crystal clear. All right. Let's show this. All right. So. Our VCC main diode mode reading here is 0.334. That's normal. So why are we getting a bunch of beeps? So let's flip this back over so that you can see that up here on the cap by the area where water goes is normal. And let's check up here by, oh, okay. VCC main is normal. So why were we getting a bunch of beeps? Uh, that's going to be because Jessa was somehow touching ground with the multimeter probes. Yep. Normal, normal, normal. Normal, normal. All right, so not an interesting story of a second short. Classic and predictable uh, single cap fault for VCC main. Boo, nothing interesting for today. All right, however, maybe we can get this phone to work and we'll see what the Genius Barb folks have to say about it. All right, Christy, does that iPad charge? It does. What? And we got beat by Christy. God damn it. Well, I'm still trying to get the, figure out the battery connector area. Can I just stick this thing back on here if they sent it? Let me see. <coughs> here, why don't you show off your work? Did you just solve a unknown problem for a device that has no schematic that was sent here by an electrical engineer? Um, sort of. What do you mean Very sort? similar to a known device. Regardless, the question is, did you just solve a charging problem for a, a device that does not have a schematic that was sent here by an electrical engineer? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, well done. And what is your education and training in this field? Um, Let's, we'll do a quick little, we'll do a, we'll do a little uh, uh, Genius Bar um, interview. Maybe you want to be... Uh, I'm not wearing black. Huh? Yeah, that's okay. We can we can see you. I'm like. Yeah, see so you're washed. you're appearing. Here's Whoa, Christy. I have no Yay! head. I can't help you with that because that camera's way over there. You could du you could duck down. Oh, that's that's creepy. You could duck down. All right, let's see. Yeah, there you go. We'll, like, come on. Wait, is your degree seriously in French? Yeah. Like your degree is in French? And math too. Math and French. Math and French? Math and French, yes. Why did you get a degree in French? Because I had enough credits in it to get one. Uh, okay. I was just going to do a minor and then... So the all the people of... That, I might as well have gotten the major, so... Alrighty. When was the last time that you... Wait, is that why all these French songs keep appearing on the Spotify? <laughs> oh, okay. All right, it all makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I now. was feeling jealous of your trip. So. I see. All right. So you've put this you've put this back in here now. Yeah. So this was a ripped off pulled pad charge port and you figured out where the 
where the um, pads went mm -hmm. just by puzzle work, right? Pretty yeah. much. I, I like the pulled pad jobs. You like the pulled pad jobs? Yeah. All right, so we can't see it because it's under there. Mm -hmm. And you can so. See the battery connector, though. Yeah, so now you're trying to deal with that. So, you, yep. so when you. This is a thing, like it's surprisingly super duper important. You know, if it's, I love this example, like that one right there. So from your experience, what do you think is the consequence if this thing is just nudged over just this little bit so that it's not making contact? Uh, I don't know which problem that causes, but it's not gonna work. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's what's that's such a shocker. I love this example of how these iPad, especially iPad Air charging problems, you know, the first thing people do is replace the battery and the replacement batteries are often really poorly aligned to begin with. They don't fit in there really well. And God damn it, so, such an important connection. If that is not touching that, your iPad will not charge. Super, super important and so easy to just you know, not appreciate. Yeah, the so other, what's your the plan two here? at the other end where I, I already bent them out a little bit to get them to right. touch it all. No, is this a replacement battery? I don't think so. I think it's just their pins are bent because they're missing. The Why pins. was he messing around in this to begin with? Um, Brad charge port. Oh, it so he, fell, so he, oh, he okay. fell on the charge port. Okay. So he, he was trying to, so he did all this trying by accident, trying to get the board out to do the charge port. port. Unfortunate. So what's your plan here? Hard Hardwire that in? Probably, but he sent the piece that came off of there. I wasn't what? sure if there was any way to get that back on. Well, that guy is an, is it, that, this guy is an engineer. Only an engineer would, would, uh, would, would save this broken piece of plastic and... Oh, God, you know what we should do? This is a great idea. We should go to... The new place called Make Academy in Livonia. We're I'm gonna make new battery connector covers. Yes, we're gonna 3D print it. Doesn't that sound like a great idea? Or we I, could just order another one. But for a iPad Five, I don't know. It's either the same as it might not be the, exactly the same as the Air. I'm gonna I do think this. It's the same as the Air, but I tried to take one off of the Air and it doesn't work. Yes, yeah, so let's because. 3D print this bitch. It, it's supposed to go around the pieces that are still on the board. Mm hmm So. I see. Well. You can see there's still plastic in there. Well, I was, I finally got the boat in the water like two days ago, and there's this tiny little fitting that's made out of plastic that is, you know, kind of, it's a little plastic nut that keeps a mm -hmm. post like in the hull. You know, just stick it on there, stick a screw in there, be fine. There we go. All better. And that's, let's show the genius guys. Uh, let's see, let's see what the genius guys think about this. So guys, we, what do you guys think we should do with this iPad 5? I mean, it's a shame. I mean, this is pretty new iPad. I don't think we should throw it away just because the charge port broke off. What do you guys think? What? We should, we can't repair it? We have to... We have to throw it in the trash and sell them another iPad 5 just because they broke the charge port? Oh, there. We should sell them an iPad Pro instead. Yeah, let's sell them an iPad Pro instead. All right, what happened to the board that I was trying to fix? So I want to go uh, stop over to that Make Academy place and see if I can 3D print the plastic specialty nut to hold the post in the hall so that you can put the key in the stupid boat and make the thing start. Let's see what happens if we put this phone back together. Let's see what happens. We've got our wire desoldered. What did the guy say? Uh, this phone will never turn back on again. I was hoping that y'all could help recovery of all my data on this phone. Let's see. Alrighty. So Captain Tape would fix it? Mm. Everybody on chat votes for sell this guy a new one. No! We will we will repair it. We will fix it for sure. 
All right, let's see. Let's see. So I can't, I'm really interested to see whether or not the Make Academy guy can stay in business. I mean, it sounds like such a great concept, but I don't really get how you can say, we're making a space. We've got welders and 3D printers and laser cutters that people can just sign up to use that don't know how to use welders and 3D printers and laser. Well, there's been a makerspace up in the city for a few years now. Does, is it like that? Mm -hmm. So you can just walk in there and be like, welding, how hard can it be? You know, give me one of them headgear things and, uh, and a lighter. I'm sure I can figure it out. That's to, that's what it is. I think for certain rooms you have to have training, but it's you know like afternoon training. Let's do a little light glass blowing. Well, I think it sounds awesome, and I and I you so know like Livonia, you said? yeah, Livonia, yeah, the bustling village of Livonia. They're showing us up. I mean, it's really stupid that he didn't put it. I don't know next to iPad rehab, but. All right, let's see what happens when we when we embarrass ourselves. Okay, let's let's see. Let's try to fire this up in front of the genius bar guys. All right, guys. Oh god, we're going to look so dumb when nothing happens. Oh, I see an Apple logo. I don't know. You said it wouldn't ever turn on again. Maybe you're right. We're going to look so dumb when this thing starts boot looping and we got to we got to do an update, especially since I blew off half of the baseband with the shield removal. Oh, will it boot? The guy says he's got no passcode, so let's find out. All right. Jess, are you guys having good luck with Droid Turbo 2? Oh! Hey, guys. Oh, my gosh. Look. Look, geniuses. Yay. It's a great day for the Genius Bar. Uh, I, I, th that stuff would go to Mark and we would do chip off. So I'm going to guess yes. Cause I haven't heard no. Yay. Hooray. Genius. Genius. We're geniuses. Look that guy over there. He's like so happy. Yay. It is, it has booted and we're going to be able to recovery all y'all's data. So great job. Uh, so guys, it did turn back on again. You lied. You assholes. You told him that his data was gone forever. And you specifically said, quote, this phone will never turn back on again. Never turn back on again. Suck it, geniuses. Suck it, suck it, suck it. All right, let's go tell... James the good news and go clean some puddle poop off my pillow.